Um, we are ready to uh, to go when you are. Okay, so two twenty one. Okay, I don't. Okay, ready. Three, two, ready. Yep. No, ready. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two twenty one of the Security Podcast here on the In Thirty Network. I'm Haim Cohen. Tom is that way. Yes, right here. Yes, yes. Tom's uh, whatever ears are down there, but Tom's over there. So anyway, uh, this happened about a week ago. We just have one story today. Basically, uh, what SIM jacking is. I know we probably explained it, I don't know, probably a year ago, two years ago. We, we hinted at it, but it actually came to actually hit a celebrity. So I'll really quick explain SIM jacking. SIM jacking is where you call up your mobile provider. You pretend to be someone else. You claim that you lose your phone and they give you a new SIM and bad things happen. And the problem is, is that that all the safeguards in place that you have are are dealt with with the weakest link, which is a human, and they're trying to help you. And in turn, they give your SIM card to somebody else. And in Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter's case, we had a big problem last week. So I'll add t- does Tom have anything to add to that little story? Uh, that's, that's really about it. Um, we can go into an aside uh, about actually security questions. Um, so... I tried, at least I used to, um, you know, try to use randomly generated strings as answers to my security questions. Um, now, one time, uh, and I thought this was great, uh, the customer service representative, I said, well, it's randomly generated. It's really long. Do you want me to read this out? Uh, and they said, yes. Yes, you need to read out each and every character. Case matters. I said, okay. Thank you, by the way, for doing your job. I greatly appreciate it. Um, And it took me a little bit, but we did confirm that I was me. Um, A different customer service representative, and actually a lot that I've had since, I said, oh, it's randomly generated. And they said, yes, it's a bunch of trash in here. It's cool. I know it's you. I was like, ah, that's, that's bad. So what I've started doing is actually putting you know, my security question answers into my password manager, but making them look like real answers. You never want to tell the truth to those things, right? Mm-hmm. You know, what was the first name of, or uh, what was the name of your first pet? Uh, make something up. Do not pick something legitimate. Don't even pick like, you know, maybe even a normal pet name like Albuquerque. Cool. That works. Um, chances are nobody's going to guess Albuquerque. Uh, I mean, they might now that they've heard the show, um, but it's better that you pick realistic sounding answers that are not truthful and store them someplace safe. Uh, and also don't share security question answers across sites. Cause it's kind of like sharing passwords, but a little less bad. Especially don't on Facebook, put your uh, security questions as answers yep. to any Facebook poll. So I guess before we get into what SIM jacking is, let's just uh, rebound on what Tom said is, yeah, the security questions are a really bad practice and somebody thought they were a good idea at, t- at the time and they probably were, but as we know, security hacks uh, get stronger and you have to, and the more you inconvenience people, the more likely they are to forget, they are to have problems and and then we get to the security question things. In the case of United Airlines, they give you the question and you have to choose the answer, which is terrible, 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 terrible. Like you can't even put a fake answer. You have to choose this. And I've always said, because I'm a uh, senior, a teacher of seniors in high school, is that you can probably get everyone's security answer from their senior yearbook. I mean, your first school, your first mascot, your first girlfriend, your first car, your your dog's name, your mother's maiden name, I mean, your favorite color. You can probably social engineer a very large chunk of that, and and that's a problem. And keep in mind that things like mother's maiden name, right? Like, a, a lot of banks will ask this pretty, pretty classically. Yeah, mother's maiden name is I got to be in the top three of security questions that somebody asks you. That information is extremely public and not just like, like regular public, like you can find it out if you dig pretty far, like really super easy to get super, super trivial answer. Uh, So don't, don't use your mother's maiden name for anything important. If you have to give something and, and you know, they're not going to check it right. Like check with them first, just say, you know, are you actually going to confirm this against public records? You know, is, am I under oath? 
uh, right? Don't don't lie to the courts. Um, but if they're not, if they're just going to write down what you say and check against the answer you give them the first time, then absolutely make up a random last name. Don't make it Smith. Make it something a little bit more complex than that. It's the problem is that in uh, a lot of Latin cultures, it's the mother's maiden name is part of the last name. And so, I mean, like when we say it's trivial, it's literally the person's name and and that can get you in trouble. And all of this is to say that it, that these are some sort of authentic authentication questions to figure out who you are. Because imagine the scenario, you lose your phone. I don't know, you're in New York City, you're in a cab, you lose your phone. Now you don't know where you're going. You get to your hotel and you have your wallet with you and you call, I don't know, Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint's customer service. And you're like, I got nothing. I literally have nothing. I lost my phone. I need something right now. Uh, sell me a phone. Sell me a SIM card. Or I bought a cheap phone. Sell me a SIM card. And what are they supposed to do? Grill you on a million questions? You just lost your phone. You don't know what's going on. And you need this right away. So the human element kicks in and saying, okay, I feel for this person and everything else, but that's what hackers want you to do. So T-Mobile is going to, tr or Sprint, whatever, Verizon, at and they're going to try and, and imagine having to put in a 64 character uh, string of nonsense, or you're, you're trying to avoid giving your mother's maiden name or the last four of your credit card or all these other trivially easy things to find. And now you're stuck. They, how hard do you press? Yeah, social engineers know that, um, you know, it's it's human nature. We want to help each other out. We don't want to see somebody in pain. It's it's, you know, quite frankly, baked into our DNA as a species that, that we want to cooperate and help each other out. That's that's the whole reason that humanity has survived thus far is that we work together and we build things greater than ourselves. Right. We're, we're not always competing and backstabbing each other. Sometimes we shake hands and do some cool stuff. Um, but it's it's that drive to help each other out that is targeted and exploited by social engineers. Um, there's actually a lot of really famous um, you know cases and YouTube videos and recordings of people uh, you know getting on the phone and acting like they're trying to take care of. Uh, they're trying to do some kind of business, right? Like replace a lost phone and there's a crying baby in the background, right? You, you act tired. You act like you're not getting any sleep. There's a crying baby in the background. Like people know what that situation is like, right? Even if you haven't personally experienced it, you know that it's super stressful. Uh, you know, you've, you're literally, you're holding the world in your hands and, and trying to make the best of it. And, you, the, the person on the other end just wants to help you out. They they want to do you a solid and, and get you through. And you're like, I just, I'm sorry. I, I lied on the security questions. It was more secure. I don't know the answer to this. Can you, can you help me out here? I'm trying to feed my kid and get him to bed. And I just, my whole world's crashing down, man. And they're like, yeah, I can help you out. Well, yeah, you just got owned because somebody was too nice. Uh, unfortunately, the advice I can give to people who work in customer service is when it comes to authentication and security, you can't be nice. You got to you gotta squash down that human instinct of helping out your, your fellow man and helping out your, you know, your, your fellow human being and just, just get rid of it. Be an evil robot. It's unfortunate. It, it sucks. I've been in that situation. It's, it's super annoying and impactful, but it is the more secure option. I love that you think that people, when they hear a crying baby, will rush their story or whatever it is. I wish I had those customer sales people because <laughs> I give credit to anybody who sees you like you're 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 about to embark on this marathon story and the baby like looking at you like I'm gonna cry and then you continue with it instead of getting to the point and and then you continue on this long diatribe and then the baby is crying and I'm trying to just say, okay, like I get this, get to the point because I believe whatever you have to say, the baby is crying and you just keep on going. That's how usually that works. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I give a lot of kudos to people who say, oh, wow, there's a crying baby. I'm just going to get to the point. But you're absolutely right. And and I see this when I tech support people, like what's your... We had this the other when uh, Superstorm Sandy came. 
my the electric's out and it's you wait 40 minutes on your cell phone you get to the person what's your account number i don't know my account number <laughs> we have no power just i live here we can't help you until you give us your account number and it's like well when you find it in the dark when you're underwater or wind or whatever no battery then come back and i think they got a lot of flack for that and now they obviously change your policies but the problem is is that 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 this is the problem. And especially if you have multiple lines, they start with what's the last four of your social security number. So I have to call my dad, find out the last four of his social security number, come back, get the person on the line. And they then they started with, well, give us a pin. And I love these companies where they ask you to set up a pin, but they never ask for it until years later. And now you have no idea what the pin is, or you don't yep. want to set up a pin. And you're like, just, I like, I, is there another way to do this? And and so there's two parts to this. One, you want to keep it secure, but if you have other members in your family, you want them to have access to at least change something just to get information, like basic information, but you have to make sure that they're also not compromised. So this is this is not the easiest problem to solve. Yeah, how do you how do you authenticate somebody that is by definition unauthenticated, right? Um, and if, if they can't get in through all the usual channels of authentication, how do you prove that they're themselves, right? Um, I have had, uh, like, uh, I have had cell phone companies text me a one-time code. Now, it doesn't help you if, you know, you're trying to replace a phone that was lost or stolen. Um, but, you know, it's, a, it's an okay, it's not great, but it's an all right way of making sure that at the very least, this person has the same SIM card that's associated with an account. I've had people email me codes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like the account pin. Uh, but that said, you shouldn't reuse pins. Like, you shouldn't reuse really any authentication token. And if you're storing in a password manager and your stuff got hijacked and now you don't have access to your passwords anymore, what are you going to do? Right? It's There's a lot of catch-22 situations that can arise with alternative authentication methods. Um you know, I, frankly, one of the one of the easiest things to do is, you know, you lost your phone, you, you know, something got stolen or picked up somewhere. Um, hopefully you still have your wallet because government issued photo ID that works in most cases. It's I mean, well, yeah, I think you're right. Look, I'm generally never with my dad at the T-Mobile store trying to figure out stuff, but it's. They usually ask him the other questions over a government issued ID. But again, it's one of those things. And we just gave you a scenario where you're there. And again, on your phone, you lost your two factor codes. That's the big problem. You lost your two factor codes. You may not be there. Like you don't have a phone call. Like you can't call your spouse and be like, can you go into this, uh, the, the box at home and rip open the envelope with my backup codes and read me the backup codes or, or anything like that. Or you can't be like, hold on, let me like, like mind read my YubiKey to try and get you the code. I can stick this in somewhere, but I can't do anything else. So, so this this problem is not a simple thing to have, and and I don't. We're not here to explain really what the answer is, but just to say what the answer is not. And I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's at least well, that's at least the problem. Uh, one thing to also keep in mind is that. You know, by definition, if you're adding anything other than the main authentication path to to an account or a system, you are by definition decreasing the security of that account, right? If if I can use my my YubiKey, my U2F YubiKey, and my six digit TOTP codes and backup codes, well, now there's there's three different ways to access that account as far as two factor goes, right? It's it's that much more likely that somebody could break into my account, right? Is it is it super likely? No, no, it's not super likely, but it does increase your attack surface. Now, if you only had one way to get in and just that one way, and if you lose that one way, you're dead in the water. Well, you've invented Bitcoin. Congratulations. You lose that private key. It's all over. Yep. So. So, I mean, we're about halfway, so I want to go through what happened and, and maybe some mitigation techniques. But first, we have a little tiny sponsor, and that is the Security in 30 free credit monitoring service. So if you just got your uh, letter from uh, Equifax and they need uh, a credit monitoring service, 
They didn't say you had to be it had to be paid or you had to show a receipt. But if I bet you, if you throw security and thirty in there, we will provide no warranty, no nothing. If you join our WhatsApp group, we we and probably Tom will do a deep web search on your name and screenshot the results for you or tell you how to do it. But that's sponsored today by the Security in Thirty free credit monitoring service. Uh, just like most credit monitoring services, we promise to not do really anything. much of anything. Um, we'll tell you that, yeah, you're you're probably hacked. Your information's probably out there. Any specific details, you're going to have to find those on your own. But we can guarantee your information has been leaked somewhere to someone at some point in time. You're welcome. Yep. And hopefully you get your $125. Okay, so 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 uh, last week, whatever it was, Jack Dorsey, all of a sudden started, that's at Jack on Twitter, started tweeting a whole bunch of random, really, really hated uh, racist and all this nasty stuff, which, which we'll get into, which is actually the best thing that could probably happen. Because remember, Jack Dorsey is the CEO of Twitter. He could have... That account could have said anything. We're selling to Facebook. We're closing up shop. You could have put all the investors in a huge spiral. Instead, it was a whole bunch of racist tirades and 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 immediately got everyone everyone saying what's going on and figured out the problem. But basically, somebody went and got Jack went to the store, probably AT and T, and said, "Hey, um, I lost my phone. I'm Jack Dorsey." give me a new SIM card and they were able to do it. And, and I mean, I don't know how much of his information is around, but I know that you can probably, he probably lives in San Francisco. He probably, I mean, you can probably do a tax record search, get some stuff there. If you're in San Francisco, you could probably see him around. There's, you can do a lot. It's, it does take some reconnaissance, but they were able to do it. And, and, and it's a problem. Yeah, and somebody as public as Jack Dorsey is, right? It's it's not really a household name unless you're on Twitter a lot or unless you're into like uh, the business side of tech stuff. But um, you know, Jack Dorsey is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a public figure. Uh, so you know, is it easy to get Jack's information? Sure, but it's not like getting Brad Pitt's information, right? It's not like like a super well known celebrity. Like tech people know him but not necessarily the wider public. Um, so it's a prime candidate for this kind of attack where somebody says, oh yeah, I'm Jack Dorsey, right? You can't walk into AT&T and say, I'm Brad Pitt, right? I couldn't pull that off personally. Um, but, you know, could I pull off I'm Jack Dorsey? Yeah, depending on who you get that day. Yeah, probably. I bet you you could do, hey, I'm Jack Dorsey's assistant and I'm here with yeah. this brand new iPhone. Can you do me a favor and authenticate it? I have this information that he wrote down for me, but, and then say, oh, I forgot it. For instance, uh, I think my uh, sister-in-law went and had to get a visa for her boss, had to travel to New York, had to get a visa for her boss. And it was like, do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have these million different things? And she didn't have like this one thing. And they took everything. They were able to help her out and get the boss on the phone and everything else. But it's... That's absolutely probably very plausible to say, hey, I'm the assistant and uh, this is what I need. And they were able to do it. Yeah. So, you know, you you're a hacker. You, you've socially engineered this this poor person to giving you a SIM card from Jack Dorsey's account. Uh, now, when when a SIM card is issued, usually the old one is shut off you know, pretty pretty fast, if not instantaneously, depending on how their systems internals work. Um, so. Jack's going to notice, right? You've got a limited amount of time before you can, you know, before you get found out. Um, so what do you do? Well, if uh, if you're this guy, you have already fished Jack. You've got his username and password. I mean, his username's Jack, right? Um, you log in and all of a sudden you get this beautiful, glorious SMS message sent right to the SIM card that you just hijacked from AT&T. And look, it's got six beautiful digits of a two-factor authentication code well sim jacking isn't going to protect you uh or uh, i'm sorry a two-factor authentication is not going to protect you if that two-factor authentication is an sms going to the hijack sim card absolutely so they 
they got in. They logged in and they started spewing a bunch of hateful stuff. Uh, now, you're exactly right. Had they done something a little bit more surreptitious, right? Start going through his DMs, start talking to people, start back channeling some information, maybe, maybe put out like a weird thing so investors start freaking out. Like, there's a whole lot of damage that can be done. Honestly, spewing some racist garbage is probably the best case scenario when you get hijacked at this high of a level. And so not only that, because they have his phone number, who knows if Gmail or whatever it is, Gmail or Instagram or Facebook or, I mean, I don't know if Jack uses Facebook or maybe his work uh, outlook or whatever it is, are they SMSing two-factor codes? They can start the password reset process, which we've seen in the past has been uh, really problematic. And... And like I said, the best thing that's happened is what actually happened and not what could have happened. Like, that's what I would have done. I would have stayed as quiet as, well, not to say the bad things, but stay as quiet as you could do, get all this stuff and either sit on it or, or you have, you have a, there's a lot of bad things that could have happened. And I think the worst thing was uh, officiating a sale that didn't actually matter and pump and dump the stock. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, the social engineer, they, they might have been good at social engineering, but mm. they clearly weren't thinking with their business brain that day. Mm. Um, you know, I, another thing that, uh, that you could do, it's like you said, you know, the SMS account recovery option. A lot mm. of places do this. Um, if you wanted to get into somebody's Signal or WhatsApp, well, it's keyed off a of phone number. And unless you've set up a two-factor or registration pin on, you know, WhatsApp or Signal respectively, um, you can absolutely jump into those systems. Now, Signal is going to all of a sudden freak out and say, whoa, hold on here. Uh, this person's safety number has changed and you have to manually re-verify that before we allow you to talk to this person. Uh, and you can either go in and mark it as verified to just bypass that screen or uh, most people will freak out a little bit and say, okay, something, something weird is going on here. Now, WhatsApp, you have to turn those messages on. Right. You, you have to actively opt into getting the security uh, key has changed notification. Uh, now, I've done it so I can see when somebody gets a new phone in our WhatsApp group, you know, it says such and such as, uh, you know, key has changed. Cool. And they usually reply back with, hey, I've just changed my phone or, you know, they tell us beforehand and then switch your phone, which is probably the nicer way of doing that. Um, but, you know, if you don't have them turned on you could totally talk to everybody in uh, in Jack's WhatsApp groups. No one's going to be the wiser. Or the DMs. Yeah. So, so again, um, I mean, I hate to not have the best suggestions ever, but some of the things that we've heard in the past and that may sound good is, okay, and just like with any security thing, you should have these scenarios already covered out. What happens if you do this? And I know that T-Mobile does issue these weird second factor like knowledge pin, so that really a second factor, but okay, you call in, what's the last four of your social security number? Okay, that's not the hardest thing to get, or what's your address, all that, but it also says give us your pin, and from what I understand, the pin doesn't necessarily have to be just a four digit number, it could be, it's just, uh, just a euphemism for password or anything else you wanna tell us. And you know what, if you're a celebrity or you're someone that's important or whatever it is, I think, I mean, I wish that these companies would have something else like Google has the advanced the advanced protection to call them and say, hey, look, uh, I'm afraid I'm paranoid. I'm whatever. Can can we do something else? So this is I have this pin and something else like a challenge response type thing and go from there. So if somebody gives me the last four digits of my Social Security number, then ask for this pin and then ask for a second pin, make it difficult. And I think that's the only real way to go. I've, I've heard of people adding you know, notes to their account. And again, it, it does rely on the customer service representative not getting you know, the wool pulled over their eyes. Yeah. It, it relies on somebody not getting tricked into giving out more information or more access than they should be. So it, you, you're still relying on a person, but it can, it can push the odds in your favor. But I've seen people make notes on their account you know, with things like, you know, only give out a new SIM in person with two forms of government issued ID. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Now, if the person listens to it, you're decently protected, right? Somebody can steal your wallet, which might have a form of government ID, but usually not too. It kind of depends on who you are and what you're carrying at the time. Uh, but, you know, it would basically require me to walk in with my wallet and my passport. And to me, that's a pretty secure system, at least for my threat model. Now, 
if you're Brad Pitt or Jack Dorsey, it might not work for you, but it's going to be better than nothing. I mean, look, if you're without a phone, you go in and you just get another phone and say, hey, T-Mobile, give me the $50 or whatever Android piece of junk right now. I need the cheapest thing. I'll buy it, put a SIM card on, put it on my account. I'm going to cancel this as soon as I get home in three days, four days a week, whatever it is. Give me some prepaid nonsense or whatever it is. Give them a heads up. I mean, there's no reason to lie to them especially if you can't get in. And then at least from there, you can call somebody. Which brings us to the point of know some people's phone numbers. I know we got to the point where we don't know anyone's phone numbers, but I mean, your house, your spouse, your kids. I mean, know, know some somebody that will pick up. I mean. Uh, it's it's also extremely helpful if, uh, if, you're ever, if you ever find yourself in a scenario where you don't have access to, to your phone and you get one phone call, like let's say you're arrested for whatever reason, it's probably important to memorize one phone number. Now, you know, if for me, if I had to memorize one phone number, it'd probably be for an attorney. Usually they can get you out of a jam. Um, and if, if I'm ever in a position where I need to dial a phone number, uh, a family member or an attorney is probably the one to memorize. The one who will pick up their phone. Exactly. I mean... I mean, I don't have kids with cell phones, but I'm probably not calling them because they won't pick up their phone. But but like you said, just uh, it's have that. I'm trying to think of anything else. So, so the last part is, okay, so what is the weakest link? And the weakest link is, so I went to Google and I went through all the two-factor steps. I have my YubiKey plugged in. I have this, I have that. And then I think I was able to remove the text message, uh, the text message thing. It was like, set it up if you want, but you can remove it. I did remove it. I put a bunch of other two-factor codes, six-digit code, a YubiKey code, a backup code, all this, but I took text message out. So I'm hoping I'm okay there. Um, I think Twitter, I was, Twitter now, I think obviously stopped that. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, Instagram I, and all the... Picking an unfishable uh, or... or rather extremely difficult to fish uh two-factor authentication scheme like a u2f key um you know currently unfishable might not be forever uh, it's probably your best way to go for two-factor but have some backups um sms probably shouldn't be it um unless it's your only option and then then you need to make the call you know am i gonna use sms as my my backup or my account recovery uh, or am I going to close that door on myself and hope I don't need it in the future? Um, you're going to have to weigh these options for yourself, weigh your threat model, and and figure out, you know, okay, how how important is the stuff in this account? And and frankly, what are the damages that could be done to me uh, if somebody got in here, right? Like for for my Twitter, if somebody broke into my Twitter, all right, it's annoying. It's seriously not the end of uh, it's not the end of my world, and I probably wouldn't notice for a while. Um, you know. Not to not to paint a target on my back, but I just don't care that much, um, you know. But my Google account, yeah, that's that's definitely more important to me. So somebody actually suggested this, and I like it. Go to Google Voice, create a Google Voice number that you don't tell anyone, and use only for these SMS two factor codes. And from there, since nobody knows it, they'll text message it, and the attacker won't know your phone number because it's going to the two factor code. And I'm not saying that that's kind of what I do, but it's I uh, set the two-factor codes to different services depending on what I need. With that said, the only one you can't do that for is Google. Do not send your two-factor backup code to Google Voice for your Google account because you're locked out of Google and then they're sending it to Google. It doesn't work. Yeah, somebody, uh, I believe it was actually on a uh, This Week in Tech uh, podcast somebody got locked out of their google account because they did that um luckily because they are a very well-known podcast and their their buddy is with a lot of googlers uh they were able to get back in uh with some like back channel hey uh buddy can you unlock me here i i did a dumb thing uh but you know normal people probably don't have those options it, I mean, you. It, I think there's some sort of there is some sort of last resort where you have to like send them a certified letter and everything else, but it will happen anyway. The key of all of this, we got one minute. The key of all of this is uh, sim jacking is a thing. 
I would talk to your kids, talk to your spouse, talk to the people on your account and talk to them how to make it more secure. And if you're going to do a pin, make sure, go to verify that they'll accept the pin or tell them to put a note on the account, like under no circumstances, no matter what, we understand the risks. Do not issue a new SIM card unless they get this question right or whatever it is. And, and I think a lot more of these high profile attacks are going to come out, but I think that's a bad but really good thing because at some point they will start learning how to stop this we we can only hope at this point so no i really think that we're not nowhere near close to the end of this it's going to take a few more high profile celebrities but after that i think that they're going to come and say you need more protection and either sms uh factor base will stop or they'll find something else or something will happen but a year or two maybe, and then we'll see some movement. Anyway, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll, we will see you guys, everyone, next week. See you, everyone. Bye. Oop. Can you end the recording, but leave us on? Yeah. Okay.